Hello and welcome back to the channel, my name is Crashy, and today we're going to be doing a VOD review of the final match between Gaming Gladiators and Full Send. This is from the grand finals of the Pokemon Unite Championship Series for North America, and I just want to catch back up with this. Now, I watched this all on stream, so I actually didn't think about doing a video for it, but not everybody watches the stream VODs. Let's go ahead and dive into it. So currently, let's set the stage. Gaming Gladiators, or TTV as you might know them, are currently winning the series one to zero, and we have the two teams here, so let's take a look at them. We have Zugrug playing full tank kind of build on Wiggly with an eject button. We have Toon playing very standard Cinderace build, muscle, scope, buddy barrier with eject button on Cinderace. Goof, muscle, focus band, buddy barrier, double band, buddy barrier with eject button on Pikachu. Indy Bear gonna be playing a pretty standard Eldegoss build with muscle, EXP share, buddy bear, buddy barrier, and then he's been using some X speed lately. And then Lutana with like triple damage item. Well, you can't actually see that. Hold on. <laughs> triple damage item Lucario with muscle, attack weight, and razor claw with a slow smoke. So relying on that handshake to uh, get his scores in for his stacks and then being as strong as possible. Otter is actually going for a more tanky, score heavy kind of build. So interesting there. Uh, Celestial, very similar setup. Red Love, really standard Venusaur setup. Uh, Snow Points, standard. Bloodline standard on the Wiggly Eldegoss. All of these builds, very, very standard builds that we're used to. So full tank builds, EXP share, muscle band, buddy barrier, double band, buddy barrier, uh, muscle scope, buddy barrier. So, all right, let's go on ahead and get into this second game. So here we are. Well, let's, I want to make sure we get, we get, wait, 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 let's, let's find our way in. All right, so 9.50 on the clock. We got Tune. The observing <laughs> definitely should be watching one of the lanes. All right, now we see the lanes break down into the first uh, fight, and it does look like GG walks away with that one. So now you can see they have the kind of position, the levels to be aggressive. Goof does have his web, so Zugrug going to be able to play pretty aggressively here. And I think they don't actually walk away with that one. So they're trying to steal this if they can, but they can't. So pretty, pretty even start. You know, GG probably has... Uh, two. I don't think they lose that one now. So it's like three to two right now. Or wait, <laughs> two to one right now. Will inevitably be or two to two right now. Will inevitably be three to two on the Audinos. My math is terrible today. And we'll see how that top lane's going. Utano a little bit ahead in experience. If he can get back to his side, he might be able to push for that level five. Celestial did a pretty full normal clear. Looks like both sides did. Pretty normal clear. So no level 5 on the Lucarios. You see Lutano playing for that push. He gets his level 5, but pretty passive lane. Uh, Otter's losing out a little bit, and nice. Nice big kill there. Zugrug saving that eject button to, to use it really to stay alive and to, to get himself out of that. They pull that Audino, that neutral Audino, into the bush. And this is kind of where like the lane is probably going to kind of run away with it. GG looks like they're starting to do really, really well. They've gotten a knockout in the lane. Top lane is getting like redoved and pushed, so this is going to turn into a really good experience for Toon, because Toon is not only going to get a knockout, a KO, he's also going to get a score most likely. Actually, maybe not, because I can see Celestial is up there now. Nah, I mean, there's not much you can do. So that's big experience right there. You can see getting a 30 dunk is like almost like a full level in the early game. Um, it's a lot of experience. So that race to level nine that like every jungler is trying to do is already being won by Toon. So 57 to zero on the scoreboard. Bottom lane's doing really, really well. It doesn't look terrible though, right? Like they're not stuck at levels. They've gotten some farm. Bottom lane's doing pretty well, but it's not the end of the world for full send. They're just a little behind, tiny amount. And uh, top jungle for Game and Gladiators doing really, really well. Now, an aggressive gank on bot lane. This is going to get Zugrug. This is really nice. They have that five man really early, really early five man. So they're trying to leverage the fact that they're behind by getting into bot lane really quickly. But Toon does show up. They're going to turn this around very quickly. 720B spawns. So not only does Toon get a couple of kills, you can see he's over a level over uh, Celestial. So like seven and a half to like just shy of like eight and a half. So he's like, yeah, he's like about a level higher than Celestial, which means the race to level nine is in his favor. So the only chance that Full Send has here is to like really get down here and either rip it very quickly, which is already out of reach because uh, Toon is level nine, or to try to be really, really aggressive and force a fight. That said, it, it took them a little too long. Toon's down here. He gets nine. They're already pushing in. They're just A-pressing, focusing on killing 
the enemy players. Celestial steps in, but they're not going to get it low enough to even get close to stealing, and they walk away with it. So, early game from GG, very strong in the bot lane, it, but it didn't get it didn't turn into like one of those big strong bot lane stomps. It was just very strong. Like they did well. Now they full break the bottom goal. They're looking to for a tier two push here. There's no jump pad, so they can be incredibly aggressive here. And they're taking the lead. This is one thing that I've always noted about a TTV. They take the lead and they like shove it down your throat. They will not let you breathe sometimes. Uh, so Toon does go down. They're going to give up some experience doing this, but they're also taking a lot, right? Like they're getting a ton of turn in, which is huge, right? They're stealing some of this back lane farm. They're stealing whatever farm they can. And um, yeah, they're ultimately just kind of stomping. Is, is really like the the picture of it so but they do give they give they give some experience don't get me wrong we'll send now can five man push this bottom tower we'll probably get them to break it or get it very very close so you know you could definitely call that a little bit of an overstay <laughs> they probably gave up way more experience and turn in than they needed to off that that's kind of okay just because of how far ahead they are like the levels are actually pretty even now based on what happened, but score wise, they still have the majority of the uh, the benefit there of getting that score. So now really the only major objective that's up on the map is this Rotom. Both teams are kind of just fighting for it. There's no farm on, on either side of the map really. Well, there is actually a lot of farm on full set side of the map, uh, but they do get control of this Rotom. Lutano's going to pop that Unite move and just try to get himself moving around. Oh, Toon gets his Unite move canceled, so this is going to be a, a weird fight, kind of a tough fight for Toon. They're going to try to see if they can get some turn-in. I don't think anybody got those turn-ins. So they got the, the 20 points in. Now we do have that Dread timer is almost up. So they're going to just be full rotating bot lane to see if they can get down there. Both teams, you can see on the map, are rotating the bot lane for this Dread. At least they were able to defend from like a big 40 turn-in or something in the top lane. But this is going to turn into a pretty big mid-game fight. I love the full rip call there. They just completely rip it. Bloodline uses the wiggly ult, but really nothing they can do. And this is like that four minute mark where you want to be using your ults, your unite moves. Lots of farm on the map, so you can kind of see everybody's pulling to their sides, their respective sides, doing their farm. Uh, Red Love getting us a nice little dunk in top lane, you know, trying to keep them, uh, you know, slightly point relevant if possible. We'll see if he goes for another redunk. Yeah, he is just based on the points that were in the bottom lane. And Zugrug. Might even just be going forward to pop ult just to turn in because it's that four minute mark, right? So like, that's what we're gonna see, right? Oh, so Indy did it. So Indy was popping his buddy barrier ult for Zugrug to see if they could score. They couldn't do it. It's just because there's that time, right? That that time that they have. Nice big overdunk. Celestial's probably gonna die for it, but that's that's good points, right? To close that gap to get something out of out of this kind of like trade, right? Goof looking for a reason to ult, you know, same thing. When you have a Unite move, you don't want to not use it. He's going to go ahead and be able to run down snow points. So you have that ability to use it. Pikachu 330 ult, totally fine. You'll definitely have it back. And uh, you just need to make sure that you're using your ults at a time where you can guarantee that you have it. For most characters, it's like around that three, you know, 45, uh, you know, four minute mark. You want to use your final ult before Zapdos uh, for Pikachu. Uh, Age of Slash is like a little bit lower too. I don't really remember the full timing of it. You can probably use it closer to like 330 for an Age of Slash ult as long as there's some farm. Nice aggressive playstyle here. They get that like first kick in. Zugrog is able to follow it up. So they can chunk Otter quite a bit. They don't have the Venusaur here. And this is not. This is pre Hoopa meta. So we don't quite have our teleports. So they're going to be able to get control of the Rotom. Which honestly, this is a very contestable Rotom. I feel like. But they didn't go for it. So now this puts the responsibility on full send to like deal with it. TTV can full rotate to that bottom dread. Lutano's just playing for vision. He doesn't have to engage. He doesn't have to fight them. But he can look for vision. He can mirror them. He can show as a presence, right? And they can go ahead and rip this. Zugrug's basing just in case he needs to go defend top lane most likely. You can see like Lutano's still holding vision on the top side of the map. So Lutano is dancing up there. You can see it on the map looking for vision and this is where a big flip happens they're all standing in the pit they know that this is their big win condition most likely big unite moves are going to come down the we're in the lead call happens and it just turns into a massive flip full send actually gets control of it but it's all going to turn into the response from gg so gg trying to get as many people cohesively down as possible 
and we'll be able to watch the scores. There's still a minute 40 left, so lots of time, a lot of time to be able to make decisions about how many people are alive. They know that they scored 200. So this is a really, really important push here because they need to try to zone out. You can see that they're zoning really, really well. All right, so that's 100 in rebuttal. They're already winning and a minute 20 on the clock. There's still lots of time for people to farm and make decisions, right? Like Zugrug most likely will be able to get a Unite move or maybe can get a Unite move, I, I mean, if he didn't use it. Um, so there, there's time is what I'm trying to say, that there's actual time to, to decide things and do things with. But they're actually winning. And every team, both teams here, are going to get a close call, like close battle call. So both teams know it's close battle, which means neither team knows which team is in the lead, which means both teams are making some big decisions. Really quick burst, the pup coming out with, uh, you know, Tune and Indy diving in really, really quickly. Now they have to kind of back up, but Zugrug was actually able to score in top lane. So now both teams should know without a shadow of a doubt that Gaming Gladiators is currently winning it. And uh, I, I'm, I'm sad that we don't have any context on how that, that turn-in happened. It might have been a Zagrug ult. I'm not really sure. Uh, might have just been like, you know, sleep, stun, Pikachu with Buddy Barrier type of beat. But Zagrug's going back. He knows he needs to stop any turn-in because they don't know how big their lead is. I mean, they know that it would have to be at least a 100 match score to go back to close battle. But they just don't want to turn let anything turn in, so... Zugrug getting that score in for them. They didn't. We know that they didn't need it, but they didn't know that because it was just close battle. So really solidifies the win. That 56 not going to be enough to to catch back up to it. They know that just based on being able to track the scores and gaming gladiators take it. So big response post Zapdos flip. Big kills not to let them score more than a couple hundred, and then big response to uh, push the enemy side and get a score. So full send honestly played amazing in this game. They they were kind of behind for a while and they just had to claw their way back and then go for a big flip to try to see if they could turn the game around. GG played pretty fundamental for both games and locked it in. So big congratulations to Gaming Gladiators on their first event under the new name, under the new org, and a really fun one to watch. So friends, thank you so much for watching. Please drop a comment if you wouldn't mind. Gaming Gladiators still one of the most dominant teams, at least very, very least the most dominant team in, in North America. But it's going to be really, really fun to continue to see this series progress, eventually get us to Worlds, and then see different metas clash and things of that nature. So as always, friends, drop me a like, drop a comment, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'm trying to keep up with the competitive scene. It's a lot of fun for me and hopefully fun for you. So let me know what you think in the, in the comments down below. Be sure to be kind to one another. Tell someone that you love them, and I'll see you on the next video.